Well, it's kind of a lazy Saturday morning, a few weeks before Christmas, and the girls and I were talking like we always do. Seems like we never run out of things to talk about. And uh, one thing led to another, and I started reflecting on some of the things in my childhood and and in growing old. I, I will be 83 in March. Yeah. And uh, whoever heard tell somebody living that long. But here I am, and I guess the Lord wants me here, so that's yeah. what I'll do. Yeah. Uh, I'm so grateful for the wonderful family that I have. I love each and every one of you real hard. And uh, I am so thankful that the Lord gave me the family that he did. I just feel very fortunate for each of you and want you to know, each of you, how very much I love you. And I think about all of you all the time. I'm so grateful that I wished all of you could live right here on the farm with me, but that's not possible. But I'm. Um... Okay. We stayed there until we pulled Baldo's uh, clotheslines down, <laughs> ripped it off with the bumper, and he decided we ought to get out of there by then. I'm not sure. I think you've already told that story. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember it at all. Oh, well, but, it, it gets better every time he tells oh, it. Oh, so good. All right. We'll, we'll let him go ahead and tell it because it gets better each and every time he tells it, and he loves to tell it. All right, let's hear it. Okay. We was coming from behind the house where we had the car park, and he drove around the neighbor's uh, yard, which he had a clothesline. Back in them days, they had clotheslines instead of dryers, and they uh, pinned their clothes on this wire type thing. So they call them clotheslines. And as this neighbor was pinning the clotheslines, he gets clothes on the clothesline, the okay, cake comes along and hits it, <laughs> and uh, drags on to it, and <laughs> heads on down the street, and then <laughs> didn't give it a uh, one thought to slow down. She kept right on the going, and it's. Clothes were just flying behind the car and <laughs> ripped on down the street and going as fast as he could. Was you in La La Land or do you deny well, all this? Now that he's told, that's his side of the story. Oh, okay, let's now hear let me give you the reality. Me, I'll give you the reality version of it. <laughs> yes, I did hit his clothesline, but I mean, I barely tapped it and I didn't knock it down, nor did I drag his clothes down the street with me. But he likes to tell everybody that he had those clothespins in his mouth hanging up those clothes and that. And oh. I come along and swished it, and he was trying to run after me with those clothespins <laughs> in his mouth, trying to get those <laughs> clothes back. <laughs> well, maybe somewhere in the middle, because it sounds like he was ready for you guys to leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 just like I said. Yeah. Uh, Grandpa likes to tell two stories about my driving. Well, yeah, I guess two. The other one was when we lived in another apartment soon after we left there and that had a real long driveway and you had to back out of it and i guess i'm like is it miranda that doesn't back up very well oh, she's terrible well i guess i was probably like her i was 15 years old just learning to drive but anyway out at the end of the driveway they had these two great big cement pillar like type things on each side of the driveway well i guess i was backing out and i, I can't remember i think i was late for work and i was going a little bit too fast probably for my skill in driving but anyway i hit the one uh, pillar on the driver's side. And I didn't stop then, I kept going. Like I said, I think I was late for work and I kept going. When I came home, I looked at that and Grandpa looked at it and the bumper had just pointed <laughs> straight out. It come, <laughs> but an L shape. <laughs> <laughs> and he never let me forget get that one either, you know. Uh, I just love my family. I. Um, I just don't know what i done to deserve all of the posterity of my children that I have. Uh, I, I don't care where you look, you won't find any children that are better than mine. And uh, 
you know, we throw the word love pretty easy in our house, our family. And I don't think there's a time in the world that the grandkids, the great grandkids come home over here and that they don't always kiss me hello and kiss me goodbye and tell me they love me. And that means an awful lot to me. My kids multiple times in a day will tell me they love me. And uh, maybe that's using it too much. And, but that's just the way we feel. We just love each other so much. And, uh, you know, if uh, somebody's gone that should be here, it seems like no matter how much noise and fun they're having, it just isn't the same if one person is gone. I don't have words, and I won't even try to tell you how hard it has been for me since Raymond died. I can have this house, there's usually around 60 to 70 people for Christmas and Thanksgiving dinner, and I can have all of them in the house, everybody eating or whatever, and I still feel lonely and it doesn't feel right. Ray's been gone for six years now and I s still feel the same way as when he died so I don't know if I'll, you know, they say time heals all wounds but uh, I have to beg to differ with them when it comes to losing one of your loved ones. But the nice thing about it is I know we'll all be together again one day and um, the Lord has been very good to our family, has blessed us in countless ways, and I am grateful for His care and His love that He gives to our family. So until next time, I'll say goodbye and I love you all.